we're going to take a look at living cationic polymerization. So in cationic polymerization, we take an alkene monomer and expose it to an initiator that will convert the alkene into a cation. And that cation will subsequently chain alkenes into a polymer. So the cation is an electrophile, the alkene pi bond acts as a nucleophile, and after an additional alkene is incorporated into the chain, it becomes the new cation that can then add another monomer and so on. However, cations are susceptible to unexpected termination. All reactive intermediates can undergo unexpected terminations. For instance, if there's a water molecule present somewhere, the water molecule could act as the nucleophile, effectively capping the cationic end of the polymer chain. And that polymer is now dead. It won't continue to grow because there's no longer a cation at the end of the chain. The reason that's a problem is that the molecular weight distribution of the polymer broadens significantly when there's unexpected or random terminations. If some of the chains become terminated very early, they turn into short polymer chains. Whereas if other chains continue to grow for a long time before they undergo these unexpected terminations, they'll be much longer. You'll have a mixture of very short polymers with very long polymers, and the properties of the material will be hard to predict. The way to get around this problem is to actually take the growing polymer chain and terminate it on purpose, but do so in a way that's reversible. So if we have a Lewis acid and some halide, for instance, that halide can terminate the growing cation because the, the halide is a nucleophile. And if it, it comes completely off the Lewis acid, we'll get an alkyl halide that's no longer growing. Now this is called the dormant phase of the polymer. It doesn't look like a cation anymore. It's not growing. It's like it's fallen asleep. It's gone into suspended animation. And while it's there, it's relatively safe. It can't undergo these unexpected terminations. And in fact, this equilibrium lies very far to the right in most cases. So a polymer will spend most of its time in the dormant phase. But the reason there's an equilibrium here at all is that we still have a Lewis acid here. And the Lewis acid can coordinate to the halide and actually remove it from the polymer chain end once more. And if it does that, then we can start growing the polymer again. But when the polymer eventually encounters the Lewis acid base addict once more, it can re-terminate and go back into the dormant phase. So the idea of living cationic polymerization is that we've got a growing phase where there's an actual cation. It can continue to get longer and longer, but it is susceptible to unexpected termination events. There's also a dormant phase that can't grow, but neither can it undergo these unexpected termination events. As a result, living cationic termination, living cationic polymerization is a much slower polymerization than a normal cationic polymerization, but it's much less likely to undergo termination. So it's a much more controlled process overall. And therefore, it leads to much narrower molecular weight distributions and gives polymers that have much more reproducible properties.